Hi, good morning, this is Misty Burmeister. I just got a request that I've gotten over the past 10 years many, many, many times, which is basically, how do I get others to see me as a leader? Uh, the way this one was phrased was, how do I increase my executive presence? So I wanna share with you the top three most important critical elements to increasing your executive presence. Now, here's the key. And Zig Ziglar, I think, said this best. No, nothing happens overnight. It's slowly over time. But what he said is this. It, while it's the hurricanes and the tornadoes that get all the publicity, did you know it's the termites that do the most damage? They take these little itty-bitty bites that over time they destroy buildings and displace people. All right, so slowly over time, as you add in these habits every single day, your executive presence, your leadership presence will continue to increase. The light that comes from you will continue to get brighter and brighter and people will naturally flock to you. They'll want to be a part of what you believe in and what you care about. Like Simon Sinek says so many times, you know, people will come, people who believe in what you believe in will come and want to be a part of what you're, of what you're doing. So here's, here's a very first step uh, to increasing your uh, leadership presence, to becoming seen as a leader and getting more and more powerful in that, in that area. Confidence. Confidence in yourself, that's trusting yourself. It's, you can call it self-esteem, you can call it uh, self-awareness. We all have room for growth in this area. I don't care if you're Oprah or, or you know, the Dalai Lama. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter where you are. We all have room for growth in the area of self-confidence, which really comes from this area called self-awareness. Being aware of who you're being in the world, of what you're doing and how you act and react in different situations. We'll go to the ends of the earth to study uh, you, you know, the manuals for any kind of electronic that we have. So like our iPhones or our, our, um, or our cars or our homes or whatever it might be. But we never stop. Few of us stop long enough to study ourselves. And as the late and great Jim Rohn said, don't just get through the day, get from the day. So here's one of the things that you can do. And I love that quote. It's so powerful. Don't just get through the day, get from the day. All right, so at the end of every day, take the time to go through the day. What worked well? What didn't work so well? How did I react? You know, how could I do that better? And it's not a, it's not a session where you, you start beating yourself up because you did it wrong or you're not good enough or you're not smart enough. You know, because whatever you ultimately resist persists. So it's not about, you know, being angry at yourself, but it's just about going, huh, isn't that interesting? Huh. I, I reacted in that way. I wonder what that's about. And bringing a sense of real curiosity to learning about yourself. Are you willing to do that? Because that takes so much courage and it takes consistency and it takes a, a tremendous amount of, um, of bravery to, to look within and get to know who you really are. And the more you do that, the more you do that, the more people will want to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing. Because when, when you face the sun, the shadows fall behind you. That's to say, when you start to notice the great qualities that exist, the power of, the power of any sort of uh, perceivably negative qualities diminish. Uh, when you begin to notice the perceivably negative qualities about yourself, the power of them diminish. It's not about fading, hiding, fading, and fixing it. It's just about being aware of it. It's about being present to it. All right, so number one key, is self-confidence. So how do you increase your self-confidence? One is every single night journal. Talk to yourself. Remember, don't just get through the day, get from the day. Learn about yourself. What did you learn in that day? So write down these three things. Number one, what am I grateful for? What happened in this day that I'm grateful for? Three things, write them under there. The second piece is, what are my qualities? What are the qualities about me, the good qualities that showed up in this day? What are, you know, I'm a good listener. I'm a good friend. I'm, I'm good with Excel spreadsheets. That would never be on my list. Uh, you know, or whatever it might be that showed up for you. I'm a great communicator that showed up for you that day. And here's the final piece and never finish the day without this. What did I learn today? So here's a couple of different ideas. One is what did I learn about myself? And the other one is what did I learn about the world and how it works? So like, for example, my nephew a few months ago taught me the difference between coal and charcoal. Now I know most of you out there already know the difference, but I didn't know it. And so I had to write that down. You know, another thing is, is 
I learned not that long ago that when I get nervous, I get louder. And in terms of I get um, my laugh, I have this sort of inauthentic laugh that I do when I get nervous. And I learned this for two because of two things. One, several people have given me that feedback. They didn't say it in exactly that way. But more importantly, I wrote about it in my journal and I explored what is that about for me? Not again, not trying to hide fate or fix it, not trying to like make it a wrong and a bad thing, but just to explore it. All right, here's the second piece. You want to increase <laughs> you want to increase your executive presence, you want other people to start following you. Decide what you care about. Decide the difference that you're going to make. Decide the outcome that you're going to make happen no matter what. Put your stake in the ground, you know, and draw it across the sand and say, "I will until I will get this project done. I will get out there and do videos. I will get out there and speak. I will write the book. I will, you know, do this project that I keep talking about wanting to do. I will do this. I will uh, swim five miles around Gibson Island uh, and I will raise $5,000. Literally dozens of people got on board with that and started to contribute and help and support me. I'm so grateful for, for, for all of them. But at the end of the day, how did I do that? I made a decision. So a lot of people ask me, Misty, how did you just give up flour and sugar? I did that uh, on, for my birthday this year, so back in May. And how did I do that? The answer truly is I decided. So decide what you care about. And again, as Simon Sinek says, the people who care about what you care about will show up to help you make that thing happen. Now, if the, if the thing that you care about is all about making yourself great and how, how great you are, uh, not so many people are going to show up. The greatness has to be about something much bigger than you. Don't chase your greatness as um, Capital One's CEO and founder, Richard Fair, Fairbanks said, don't chase your greatness. Chase something that's great. That is remarkable and sage advice. All right, so here's the, that's the second one. So decide, make a decision. The final one is to take action. Act, act, act. When you, see, when, when you get a request, you know, can you come do this? Say yes. Say yes to opportunities. Now, if you know what, the, what, what your ultimate goals are and what you're striving to achieve and you already are there where it's, uh, I think I need to start saying no to things, then when the opportunity comes in, ask you, is this going to further my goals? Is this going to help me to make the difference that matters to me? And if the answer to that question is yes, run after it. If you don't yet know what those greater goals are, expose yourself to a variety of people, a variety of processes, experiences. Get out there and expose yourself. And then go back and study yourself. Study what, you know, how did, how did I do in this situation? How could I do better? How could I, uh, you know, what did I like? What did I dislike about all of these different experiences that I just went through? Because doing that will help you identify what you care about. So depending on where you are in the process, take action on the things that really are going to help you to get to where you're trying to go. Know where you're trying to go. So you know what to say yes to and what to say no to. And of course, if you're looking to get other people to do remarkable things, look at what they care about and then encourage them to set goals. Encourage them to tell, you know, find out from them what they care about, what experiences, what people would be really good for them to meet. Make those introductions, help them to grow. Give, 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 give. The more you give, the more they'll give. I promise you that. All right, so that those are the three most important elements to increasing your executive presence. Of course, first of all, increase your self-confidence, which has to do with getting to know yourself falling frankly in love with yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, I love you. I love you. I am love. I love myself. It's so important because of course, this is not an egotistical thing. The more that you love yourself, the easier it is. And the, uh, the only way to love other people is to love you. You've got to, and you can't give anything to anybody else that you are unwilling to give to yourself. You'll be amazed at how many, qual how many people that you used to maybe dislike in the past, or as you do this process, you'll begin to see who they really are and all they really are is love. At the end of the day, we have all these strategies uh, to getting through life that we don't even know that we have. And the more we love ourselves just the way we are, we just love ourselves, the more space we have for other people to just be human, to be who they really are, to without judgment, without such judgment. So for the, the less we judge ourselves, you know, the less we judge other people. And the more that we focus on doing the things that are meaningful to us, the more people who care about that same thing show up. 
And the more that we love ourselves, the more that we can love them. And the more we love them, of course, the more that they, it's just, you know, it's a whole cascade uh, that happens. So that's the first one, self-confidence, make a decision, decide and go for it. Make a decision on what's important to you. Make a decision on the difference that you're going to make. And then finally take action, confidence, decision, action, confidence, decision, action, confidence, decision, action, get your team to do the same thing. Watch how they begin to step up in ways that you've never seen before because you're continually increasing your confidence, making bold decisions that might fail by the way. And though I don't really believe in failure, failure is the opportunity to see what doesn't work. Uh, and the only thing it really harms when it doesn't work is our ego. Uh, so go out and make great things happen. Get your team going. This is how ultimately you increase your executive presence, no matter where you are in the process, no matter if you're the CEO of a ginormous company or the CEO of you. You want to build your executive presence. You want other people to be able to have the opportunity to light their flame from yours. Get out there, work on yourself. Get out there, make some decisions, actions, and continually increase your self-confidence by getting to know who you are and loving all of it. Here is to your greatness. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please share.